everybody. Who's excited about memory leaks? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't expect that. Uh, yeah, after the coolest, trendiest topic of AI, let's go to the most neglected one of uh, JavaScript and leaks. So anybody seen that screen? Maybe not on, in this type of projection. Imagine that would be cool if uh, there is some sort of astronomy presentation and suddenly Chrome crashes. Because I know it's Chrome behind all of this, of course. So uh, yeah, if you can read it, it says, oh, snap, out of memory. So how many of you have seen this? Rarely, kind of, right? Because developers, we use good computers, and uh, uh, we rarely see this. And, but do you think anyone ever sees it? With your apps, how dare you? Never. How can you say? Well, you may be surprised. So uh, Nolan Lawson, uh, a few years ago, he used uh, a one-off tool called Fuit, which is leak in French, uh, and expected the uh, 10 most popular SPAs. Uh, he basically was just clicking and going back to the home page. And uh, lo and behold, 10 out of 10 have memory leaks. One of them even have 186 megabytes of leaks on a single interaction. So, and these are the top 10 apps with really, really good developers who work on them. So uh, it's not like we are lazy or sloppy. It's just leaks are easy to create. All right. Yeah. A while ago, I was working on a kind of a famous social media site. So we were trying to do the whole uh, single page app thing. And we figure out you have a problem. We crash the user's browsers because we leak memory. And where do we leak? I don't know. It's a big project. We didn't have good tools back then. So uh, what was the solution? After 15 or so soft navigations, we just fully reload the page. Give the browser a chance to start over. Turn our SPA into an MPA. For just a moment. That was embarrassing. But yeah, today things are different. Today we have tools. So let's talk about uh, so this is the plan for today. Uh, first to figure out if we do have a problem, because if it's a more of a, you know, um, MPA, maybe not. Um, then try to figure out where the leaks are and talk about some common patterns on how to fix them. Oh, about me. So I'm currently at Etsy, um, web page test, a darling of the web uh, performance community. Spent a bit of time in Facebook and Yahoo before that, mostly doing web performance front-end optimizations. I wrote a bunch of books. This is my bestseller. I don't suggest you buy it. It's very, very old. Please don't. Um, then I wrote a bunch of others, uh, like maybe one of the first for React. So even the second edition, please don't. It's, it's already so out of date, but yeah. So. <laughs> But enough about me. Let's talk about your application. Uh, so the first step in addressing a problem is admitting that you have a problem, right? Uh, how do you know you leak memory? Well, luckily now we have the reporting API. Uh, it allows you to get data back from the browser whenever there is an out of memory crash in real life. So you can stop guessing, start collecting the data, and see if you do have a problem. So. Um, you can get you know, those uh, out of memory or unresponsive crashes. There's actually an, uh, other things that you can get from the reporting API, like if uh, your users see a security violation, the CSP, uh, if the browser sends any uh, notes for deprecating features. And OK, you discover that you do leak memory. So what are you going to do about it? Option A, call a friend. <laughs> That's a person who knows all the secrets of the universe and can dive into your app and unearth the leak. And uh, then you go and fix it. And then everything's fine, right? No. The thing is, there's usually not a single leak. And even if you fix the one, the next one is just around the corner. So the better option, start debugging and um, taking some memory snapshots. Uh, so the idea is to have three steps. You load the home page or the initial page, then you perform some sort of action, interaction, uh, and then you go back to the initial state. Every time you uh, cause the browser to garbage collect, so you use the, the memory 
um, tab in DevTools. And um, garbage collect, take a snapshot. And at the end, compare snapshots one and three and see if there's any difference. Are there any object left that shouldn't be there? And if that sounds hard or non-trivial, you're not alone. So luckily, we can have some help from some open source tools. So there is this one called MemLab that I want to talk about by Facebook. It's a command line tool. It uses Puppeteer to do those three steps. Load the page, do interaction, go back. And then uses some intelligence, not artificial, I don't think, to, uh, to make an a, a educated guess and educated diff between the snapshots and tell you uh, where you have leaks and what objects are leaked. Uh, so it's been using at Facebook, uh, even to find some leaks in React itself. So this is what it looks like. Uh, you run it, and then, all right, here at the top section, uh, it tells you what happened. Uh, here in section number two, it tells you what it found. In this case, it found over a thousand leaking objects, but they're all the same kind, so it gives you kind of the path to find the first one, and maybe you'll find the other ones as well. So th those graphs represent the memory usage every stop of the way. So ideally, it should look something, something more, and then go back to the bottom. And if it doesn't, you have a problem. Um, so this example that I just tested was something like this. Like you create a you know, 1,024 diffs, add them to the window, and never clean them up. So this is what uh, MemLab was able to detect. So MemLab uses these so-called scenario files. It's just a JavaScript file. That at the very minimum, you have to implement three methods. One, where to go. Then what to click or interaction, write something, anything that Puppeteer allows you to do uh, to perform an action. And then similarly, anything you want to do to come back. So there's additional APIs for uh, cookies, for login state, if the app is behind the login. But that's the bare minimum. Um, so this is a, a real example from a real life Maps application that shall rename nameless. So you load the map, then you click a button that says show me hotels around here, and then you say, no, 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 forget it. I'm going to go back, clear the search, go back to the initial state. And uh, this is what um, MemLab tells us, right? This is the, uh, the first step, there was some memory used, second step, and then the third, we didn't go back to the beginning. So all this showing of hotels and stuff left some stuff behind. Leaks are everywhere. Like, it's, not, it's not our fault. We're not sloppy. We're not bad developers. Everybody does it. Um, so if, you're, if you rarely use Puppeteer, you're not familiar, uh, it might be a little bit of curve to get off the ground. So uh, that's why I published one Chrome extension um, to help with that. So there's a recorder panel in, uh, uh, in Chrome DevTools, and it's extensible, so you can you can click around stuff and then export in a format that you like. So by default, it exports in JSON, Puppeteer, and whatnot. So my extension just lets you, from your actions, to export um, scenario.js file that can be used with MemLab. And I'm happy to announce I already have 50 users. So there's 50 people who care about memory links. <laughs> And it says featured, so I guess it's all right to use. Um, right, so, okay, you found the problem, so how do you go about fixing it? Let's take a look at a few common patterns. Um, in general, most of the times is, um, you know, just some objects that are left over after they're no longer needed. So um, most usually DOM nodes. Uh, in this case, you just have to find what's, what's still hanging out in memory, assign null to it, and you're done that uh, signals to the garbage collection that this is no longer needed and now can be safely removed. Oh, let's play a game. Spot the leak. <laughs> All right, so we start with uh, a simple React component. I know it's a class-based component, don't kill me. But uh, for people 
who are not familiar with React or haven't looked at lately, I think it makes more sense. So what it does is right, it outputs some sort of um, content, um, does something, and then when it is attached to the DOM, when it mounts, it uh, adds an event listener and listens to key presses. That's why it's called Snoopy, because it snoops on everything you press. So where is the leak? I mean, there's not too much code, so where could it be, really? In this area. So what, what's wrong with this? Uh, OK. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Uh, basically, when you remove Snoopy from the DOM tree, uh, this listener will keep on listening, and this uh, event listener will still be around. Spot the leak, session two. Same thing, but we added an, uh, a set interval. So there's another listener that just counts time. Where's the leak? Right, again, when you remove, there's two listeners just hanging around. So if you debug this with, uh, uh, with um, a memlab, uh, if it's minified code, it's going to be horrible. You might not be able to see anything. So that's why a good idea is to uh, use non-minified code for debugging, and also to name the functions, right, instead of anonymous. Uh, functions to use named ones. Anybody remember bind? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, now when you, when you gave names to our functions, um, yeah, non-minified code named functions using memlab recorder, and then running memlab with the with the Snoopy JS that was generated. And then we can look uh, look for stuff. And then I don't know. That's kind of white. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, our Snoopy key down and Snoopy interval are clearly visible there, so you know where to look. So how do we plug the leak in this case? Yeah, well, we just do a, add a component, we'll unmount and clean up after ourselves when we're done, right? In this case, the event listener has to be accessible for both um, did mount and will unmount. So yeah, simple. So this is React, but uh, in any framework that you use, if there's a, there's got to be some sort of way to clean up after yourself, after the component is removed. Oh, yeah, we should benefit from those. Spot the leak again. All right, so this is what we just fixed. That works. And this is a leak. I'll just switch back and forth and see if you can see the difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I wish I was making this up, but that's a real uh, life scenario, something that uh, a memlab was able to find out. It's just somebody decided, because they're not using typing and stuff like this, to uh, spell mount with uppercase. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Component did mount is uppercase, unmount, yeah. So yeah, all this cleanup work is for nothing. One more time with hooks, right, so that uh, People are not disgusted by the class-based components, right? <laughs> now we have use effect, right? So in this case, we do two things. One is the event listener, the key down, and one is the interval. They could be in the same use effect, but um, I know personally I prefer to have one for each, you know, chunk of work. Uh, so the leak is obviously again when it when the component is removed. Uh, some stuff still hangs out. How do we plug it? Well, a use effect uh, allows you to return a function, and that's the, the clean up that you do. So yeah, again, same thing. Return a function that cleans up after yourself. So different API, class-based versus uh, function components, but still the same tools to uh, clean up after. Spot the leak again. Wow, that one's weird. Is this a memory leak? Yeah, turns out it is. Turns out the uh, the console, you know, retains some references to the stuff it logs, uh, and you can actually explore this in uh, in the memory tab in Chrome when you take uh, a snapshot. Then you can filter by you know just things retained by the console. But uh, I mean, whoever puts console logs in production, right? No one ever. That has never happened. <laughs> All right. To sum up, thank you very much for your attention. Um, so, I don't want to be I don't want to be paranoid, but I think they're everywhere. Leaks, man, scary. Um, and yeah, when you come back tonight, that's the thing to do. Try the reporting API, then check whatever the, your uh, 
framework of choice allows you. And uh, just no, use null everywhere, and try memlab and uh, memlab scenario recorder and see how that works for you. And uh, that's some, you know, okay, encouraging word at the, uh, words in the end. As you can see, leaks are hard to find, but usually very easy to fix. Just assign null to things, clean up after, and um, just try to use the tools we have and find your first leak today. And this will make your users, if not happy, no one can guarantee happiness, right? at least a little bit less frustrated. And with that, I thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you actually, very much. Yeah. Just, no, just no, one okay, second. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, okay. no, no, hang out, hang out. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if we have time, but uh, I guess we do. So uh, I'm part of the web performance community, so is Henri. And uh, I, this is one of the things, like I run an uh, advent calendar called Web Performance Calendar on the website called Perf Planet. So every December we publish one article a day related to performance. A lot of it is uh, front-end performance because that's where most of the time is spent. Uh, and over the years we have some fantastic, I mean it's been running over 10 years. Um, like there was an article about how React reconciliation works that was very popular because it wasn't documented anywhere. So uh, yeah, if you haven't, reach over from the JavaScript land to the web performance land, learn about uh, the latest and greatest, and also it's very open to, it's all community driven, so whoever sends me an article, I publish it. This is the editorial process. So if you want to share a story, <laughs> right. uh, yeah. if you want to share any type of story or research or anything you did, case study, uh, I'll be happy to publish it. Yeah. Awesome. Put your hands together yeah. again for uh, Mr. Stefanov. Thank you.